presentation 
our economic impact study that was conducted by Dr. Matt Pelkey. Uh, I appreciate all of you taking time from your busy schedules to come out and to participate and hear this important presentation. Uh, before we get started, I would like to recognize some of our special guests that are with us uh, today. And let me say that all of you are special guests, so thank you for uh, everyone being here. Uh, we do have with us uh, Senator Ben Gilmore. Senator Gilmore, where are you? Okay. Representative Howard Beatty is here with us. And we're so pleased to also, we've had with us all day long today, Mr. Rex Nelson, who's senior editor in the Arkansas Democrat Gazette, and Rex is with us. We've had a full day of touring the campus with Rex and having a wonderful lunch at Young's. And uh, so he challenged me that I needed to be sure that I beat uh, one of the other schools he had visited yesterday or prepared to eat. And I said, we'll go to Young's today. Uh, he already knows about Ray. So we've got great eating places in Monticello. We enjoyed a great meal with him there. Uh, thank you so much for being here. Uh, I will be very quick in my comments because I want to uh, turn over this time to Dr. Pelkey for the presentation. But all of you know uh, the importance of the relationship between the University of Arkansas Monticello and your various communities and the businesses and industries in our region. Uh, what we had, what we realized is we talk about the economic impact of the university and our students and all the things that happen because the university is present here on our region and the economy, but in the past we've not had really solid uh, data to use to show that true impact. So we are taking advantage of the Arkansas Forestry Business Center uh, and Dr. Pelkey's expertise uh, and ask them to do a true economic impact study. Uh, he spent a great deal of time gathering the different information that he needed and uh, completed the study and I think you will find with me that it's uh, going to be very impressive and uh, very eye-opening about the impact uh, that UAM uh, is having and will have in the future. So I want to go ahead and get started and introduce Dr. Matt Pelkey and let him do his presentation and afterward uh, we will have a Q&A a time, and then I'd like to make just a couple of closing remarks at that time. So let me introduce to you the director of the Arkansas Forestry Business Center, Dr. Matthew Pelkey. Well, in times like this, it's a pleasure for an economist to be able to deliver some good news. Um, I want to say, though, that this is really about people, and I want to thank a few individuals here who have helped me with the work. Uh, Dr. Tian, uh, who is another economist in the Business Center and in the College of Forestry, Ag, and Natural Resources. Uh, she helped me with some of the design methodology on the study. And then I also want to thank uh, Dr. Marsha Clayton, who is here today. Uh, as we had gotten the study near its, near its ending stages, I had discussed with her uh, some of the results and the methodology used, and I really appreciate her impact, her input, and the impact that it's had on the presentation. So I want to thank you, Dr. Clayton. Uh, as Dr. Doss mentioned, I also want to thank uh, Representative Beatty and Senator Gilmore. Uh, when they were very much a key part of funding the Arkansas Center for Forest Business in the legislature, uh, along with uh, retired Representative Ken Bragg, because uh, I really don't ever want to forget Ken. He's uh, so much, very much a part of forestry in this state. But what that has allowed, the funding has allowed, is we were, we were able to have access to some fairly sophisticated database software that allowed us, allow us to do this analysis. Uh, and so uh, while the mathematics and the technology are fairly widely understood, the database and the software to do it uh, really is not so commonly available. So let's start with moving on to, I guess, well, no, one other thing. What I'm reporting today, uh, and, and Dr. Doss uh, told me that she appreciated the work that I put into it, uh, and I'm very grateful for that. But what I'm really amazed with is that all of this starts with people in this room. And over time, it starts with the parents that are raising their children and seeing that they get an education and getting them into school here at UAM or working in the community. And it starts with the community leaders and the interaction. It starts with the faculty and staff and administration who have been at this university for over 100 years. 
building an alumni body that has education and skills that are able to better serve uh, both the region and the state, uh, in fact nationally, although I didn't extend the data to a national impact, but I certainly can if someone's interested in that. So it starts with all those people, and I'm just recording or reporting on that excellent work, and that hard work. Uh, so I get to take, so don't give me credit for it. You can blame me if something's wrong, I'll certainly take credit for that. But the economic impacts are all about the people, the students, the staff, the community uh, that are in this room. Uh, and I think you'll find the numbers rather interesting. So we based the study on some work that was done uh, in the Michigan University Research Corridor. Wayne State University, University of Michigan and Michigan State wanted to know the economic impact. Uh, and so they did a very detailed, they, they had commissioned a detailed study by Anderson Economic Group uh, out of Chicago that did the research work and they had a really nice documentation of it. And so we basically took this process and adapted it to Arkansas and to UAM. So when we think about economic impact, one of the first things we're gonna go, and, and, and Kelsey, if you're worried about this being a blank slide, I just did a little bit of animation for it. First thing that happens at UAM is, is that we've got faculty, it starts with faculty and staff, and administration salaries, and then our operating budget. And so those salaries go into uh, a household impact, uh, household income impact because UAM faculty are spending their money at doctors and dentists and Walmart, uh, drug stores, uh, automobile dealerships, so they're spending their money. And then the operating expenses also travel into the community, uh, whether it's Baker Electric uh, or Barton's uh, or uh, up in Star City, the, the Grasshopper uh, mower distributor and, and, and maintenance people there, it's spreading throughout this community. And so we start off with that, but that's just the beginning. The next part that we get to is, I was interested in when we have close to 50,000 people coming onto this campus for athletic and special events uh, every year. And there's a tremendous amount of diversity. Some of these, many of these are multi-day events. Uh, and so we took some of the data and looked at, at, at spending patterns and came up with what we thought were some, what I thought were some reasonable daily expenditures uh, for both people coming in from uh, out of the region, within the region, and then out of state to the, some of these events. Uh, and so we came up with this spending, and a lot of this goes into, is, is part of the community, it's the hospitals, it's the restaurants, it's Walmart, it's the drugstore, people coming in, it's the gas stations, people who are traveling come in and they're attending a UAM event and of course they're also spending some money on campus, we don't mind that either, uh, but uh, you know when we think about homecoming and how successful that event is and the grocery stores are providing an awful lot of the food and services um, that, that, that our community then puts a little loving touch on in terms of making the food and then it's a, a, a key part of that uh, event. So we have that additional spending. Uh, but what's really interesting is we've got some 22,000 living alumni. We have over 50,000 people who have attended UAM but did, uh, uh, and either got a degree or did not get a degree. It means they, they, they took some classes. And the U.S. Department of Labor has some really interesting statistics that show that Individuals who attend a community college or university, even if they don't get a degree, it has a substantial impact on their lifelong earnings. And of course, having a two-year, four-year, or graduate degree that continues to accelerate those earnings. So this happens right now in the, in the 14 county region of Southeast Arkansas. But here's the added income that our alumni are earning annually. It's not a small amount of money. Now we're looking at those that have degrees, $82 million, and this is in this 14 county southeast Arkansas area, $37 million of additional household income because students, because they, they attended UAM, they got some inspiration. Now we can, we can have all kinds of arguments about marginal effect or how many of these people might have still earned that money. 
that's for a deeper discussion maybe afterwards because uh, I don't want to take up all that time. I could. I'm, a, I'm an economist and I love to teach, uh, so I'm very much interested in that debate you know, after we've gone through this information. So all that spending goes on and there are wage multipliers because if I'm buying, if I'm spending my money at Walmart, part of my salary, and a fair amount of it does go to Walmart here in town, uh, or to Ray's or Young's, both are, I, I've frequented those, obviously you can tell from my size, maybe Young's a little too often, but uh, it's paying some of the salary for the people who are working there, and so they've got wages because we're supporting them as a, as a community. Um, we also, uh, you know, our students that come in here are living and they're renting apartments and they're buying groceries. They're making expenditures on clothing and other, other goods and services that they need to support themselves. So you've got this wage effect and then we've got profits too. We can actually identify what are the profits to the local community businesses for which they can pay, uh, you know, basically dividends to themselves and they also pay rents and royalties on any technology. So anyone who owns a fast food restaurant knows, you know, you're paying a franchise fee. So that's some of that money that's coming into that, that larger section, that 95 million. And then there's not a small amount of tax revenue, $24 million distributed uh, in 14 county area of taxes that are attributed to the spending that's going on. Uh, from UAM alumni and former students and staff and the operations of the university itself. So that's in the 14 county area. So now let's take a look at what happens when we look at statewide. Because the majority of our students post-graduation are working outside of the 14 county area. So that's one opportunity that we'll have for a discussion in terms of how we develop and have an economic development policy that keeps more of our graduates in these 14 counties and capture some of that, but right now they're a pretty integral part of uh, the state's economy. So we start off again with UAM spending, and the reason why this goes in the state economy is, is that, I'll have to admit, don't get mad at me if you're a business owner here, I go up to Little Rock sometimes and have a dinner or do some shopping up there. So that's what economists call leakage. Uh, and in this, so the bigger the geographic area, the less leakage. And I even order some things on Amazon from time to time, which means that the money's even going out of state. So there's leakage outside of the state as well. So we're gonna capture a little bit of this by going into statewide numbers. What we're also going to see is we get a larger amount of spending on athletic events from people who are outside of our 14 county area. Uh, and you can think about it just about parents from our student athletes that are coming in to see a game and they don't live uh, games, multiple games, oftentimes for multiple days, uh, that are coming in for events. Uh, our students, when we have a parent appreciation day, we get a lot of family that come in and they're traveling in from out of state, so they're making expenditures outside of the 14 county area. And then we also have students who are living outside of the 14 county area, and so student expenses for living and expenditures are a little bit higher as well. So we see those numbers all take up. But now here's where some of the big numbers come in. UAM alumni and those who have attended UAM, we're talking about nearly $550 million worth of added income statewide because they've gotten a degree here, because they've had education here, and that's enabled them to be better earners from the time they graduate to the time they retire. So now we look at the wage multipliers are considerably higher, $70 million of state tax revenue. I'd be remiss if I didn't say that's a larger number than the state provides us in funding. So we're a good, so, so Senator Representative, we're a good investment. You're getting your money back. The state's getting their money back on what we're doing here at UAM. Uh, and that's always a nice thing to report. Uh, you know, we're not a, a for-profit institution, but it's nice that we are contributing to society and excess. I'm always concerned about that, making sure our contributions as state employees are in excess of what we're being compensated for. That number is getting awfully close to a billion dollars a year, annually, yearly, you, uh, the, the state's economy. 
Now, we're about $150 billion GDP state economy. So we talked about that, and that's like that percentage. That doesn't seem so impressive, but $943 million a year of added economic activity. I'm sorry, that was a bigger number than I expected when I started this work. So those are kind of the numbers. How did we get there? And some of the other impacts. So regionally, employment. You know, we're directly employing, let's see, 523. We get another multiplier of about 602. One of the things, so 602 additional employees, because of the, the money and the expenditures made by UAM, its faculty, its students, uh, and its alumni, uh, and folks who have attended uh, UAM. And I should mention also, I, I think I forgot to mention, this includes the colleges of technology at Crossland and McGee. I didn't want to minimize. We, 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 we pulled that information for them as well. They are substantial economic drivers in their own right, but in com combination with, uh, as, a, as a university system, uh, we wanted to report those numbers. So we look at that, and then I'll talk a little bit about the kinds of jobs those are, the additional 600 jobs. And if we look at statewide, we're looking at over 3,000 jobs statewide that are supported by this university. So it's a, it's a considerable amount of employment on an annual basis. But then also the tax revenue we mentioned. We'll pass that. In the 14 county region, about $4 million of tax revenue, 70 million statewide. So it just, it just kind of highlights where those numbers came from. But I do want to talk a little bit about where I got the information. So U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics. Oh, Dr. Pelkey does the wrong thing. There we go, got it back. So here's our payroll. Here's our operating expenditures. The implant software that I use actually has a way to take a gross university expenditure and, and has typical spending patterns for universities, community colleges, and junior colleges. So I didn't have to parse out exactly how UAM spends its money. I could do that and probably would get some. It would, it would take literally hundreds of hours of work to fine tune the, the data model that way and maybe come up with a half a percent difference. I've done some of that testing and so we don't really substantially deviate from uh, the average in terms of expenditures uh, as a university. Uh, there's the special events and athletic events and student living expenses, but a graduate degree at UAM means almost 40 grand a year in added income. That's pretty good. Four-year degree, 27,000. But even a two-year degree, I don't want to say a two-year degree, it's like even a two-year degree, $8,000 a year. But if someone attends UAM, they don't get a degree, but we've given them a chance, we let them see what some of the possibilities are for them, that's still $4,000 a year in added income. Um, and of course, when we look at where those are being distributed, you know, a lot of those 37,000 are our most underprivileged and disadvantaged of college students anywhere in the country. So that $4,000 a year is a big helping hand to move upwards. And we're seeing a lot of them are, you know, are taking that opportunity. And they're becoming better workers. And uh, some of them we might think of as, like I talked about, as the Thomas Edison effect. They may come here, they get inspired, and they realize, okay, a degree isn't for me, but I've gotten some ideas, and now I just want to go and work and implement them. We'd like them to finish their degree, but recognize that, that they're going to choose their path, but they've gotten some value from the education here. Just some final thoughts, and I'll let this Dr. Goss finish this up. And I guess I'm, I don't want to run too much later because I'm taking more time, and I want to give time for questions. Just some summary. The biggest thing that I want to talk about is, is UAM is, kind of is, is really that last one you've heard. Uh, the, the breakdown for local governments. 123 medical workers locally here in the 14 county area because of UAM. Uh, 452 medical workers statewide. Uh, I had a little bit better breakdown of 
that information. And I, th I found it kind of interesting related to our so if you look at within the region, UAM's economic impact or contribution of jobs outside, about 49 jobs in limited service restaurants. Okay, we're going out. We're getting some fast food. Okay, another 48 jobs in hospitals. So it tells me maybe we're going out to fast food, then we're visiting the hospital. Because we've enjoyed ourselves too much. Individual and family services, 37 jobs. Office of Phys Physicians, 33 jobs. We go to nursing com and community health care facilities, 23 jobs. Outpatient care centers, 13 jobs. So people, in, people are, are visiting fast food restaurants with some of this income. They're getting medical care. What else are they doing? Monetary authorities and depositories, 16 jobs. So there's where our banks and our real estate and our investment firms are in. And then the other thing that I thought was interesting, 16 jobs in religious organizations. Well, doesn't that, isn't that Arkansas? We get paid, we put money in the bank, we get good health care here in Monticello, we go to church. Uh, we're supporting a lot of those, and those things in a rural community are things that are really helped by the university being present here. Uh, but before I turn it over to Dr. Dossel, I, I've talked a lot about numbers as an economist. The one thing you, you have a real hard time valuing is the overall improvement in someone's life because of an education, because of the way they see the world differently, because of the things that they can enjoy in terms of that broadness of experience. Uh, the social well-being, the, the ability to appreciate and understand so much more what's going on in the greater world. It can't put a dollar value on that, but it certainly is a very, very important part of the community. So with that, Dr. Doss, I'd like to turn that back over to you, and then we'll go from there. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Pelton. So, so certainly Dr. Pelkey has, has shared such valuable information, and I don't want to, to repeat some of the things he said, but I do think it's worthwhile reiterating um, that you can clearly see now from very scientific research that's been done, the impact of this university, not only just on model cell, but the region and the state. And so that, that begs the question of, you know, you have to think, uh, what if you didn't have the university? What would your what would your community look like? What would your families look like? And so that's why we we are working so hard every day to continue to grow UAM, uh, to improve our programs, and to uh, increase our enrollment. Because the more students we have here, the more programs that we have here, the more students that we graduate, or at least as you said, that they at least get some value. You know, there's some partial. Um, um, education here, uh, you can see economically how that impacts our region. Uh, we know that our region uh, is challenged uh, with the, our population. We, we have somewhat of a population bleed and we want uh, to work with you in the community, uh, with all of our economic development groups, city councils, quorum courts, to do the things in our community that helps to retain these students that we're graduating in Southeast Arkansas. So more and more of those dollars turn over, turn over within our community. Um, some of the things that I wanted to, to mention um, is the, that I've said this before, I think community and university have a symbiotic relationship. Uh, we depend upon each other and this so clearly points that out. Uh, without the restaurants and the hotels and the businesses that are so generous in supporting uh, UAM through sponsorships and, and other ways throughout, uh, throughout the academic year and all year long, um, you know, we would not be able to do the things that we do. We couldn't have this number of people in, and they would not have places to stay and places to eat. At the same time, by the fact that we have these events on the campus, look how it's supporting your communities. Just think of any weekend. Everyone knows when we have a homecoming weekend at UAM because town is so busy. Uh, we just recently, in the past few weeks, had the Intercollegiate College Rodeo here. Uh, that was, that brought in 260-ish, uh, about 65. Um, high school, uh, excuse me, college athletes from 16 universities across the country to Monticello for that Thursday through Saturday event. 
And uh, you, you notice when those individuals are in town, they're shopping at the local farm stores, they're shopping at the restaurants, eating at the restaurants, and staying in our hotels. Uh, so we, we see that importance of this relationship between the two. I'm so proud to say that all of you in this room and, and those that could not be with us today are so generous in supporting UAM. Uh, we realize that you give a lot to us in sponsorships and other ways to help us uh, do the work that we do. Um, we're working so hard to recruit more students and one way that you can help us in doing so is by making sure that when people drive into our communities that they see the presence of UAM. Uh, when they drive into Monticello, they need to know that they're in a university town. Uh, that, that's very important. We, we're just a little bit outside of the city limits, and so when they drive in, the first thing they need to see is that, that there's a presence here, and that university is just a couple of miles down the road from them. And I know out in our other communities where we have our colleges of technology, that same thing's so very important. Um, I think some facts that it's important to know just about our university here is that 49% of our student population are first generation students. That, that's really something to think about when you think of that many individuals that are the first in their family to go to college. We have in the state of Arkansas, and I believe my, my information is correct on this, I know a couple of years ago I looked at it, it was about 28% of our Arkansas population has a bachelor's degree. Um, so you can see the more that we have an educated citizenry, those that have had at least some college, and of course we want them to finish that degree, but at least some college or they graduate with a, a certificate of technology, that that's value added, that's more spending power for them, it improves the lives of our citizens, it improves the lives of family. When that first person graduates from college, it's such a point of pride. Uh, and then it encourages others to come do the same thing, whether that is, like I said, just maybe getting a technical certificate. But I don't want to say just getting that, because some of our graduates with technical certificates are making huge salaries. I'll give you an example. The College of Technology in Crossit, uh, one of our electromechanical technology graduates, and I believe that's a two-year program, uh, is going to work at $92,000 a year immediately by completing that two-year program. The unfortunate side of that is it's not in this region. They are at OCO where the steel mill is. So we see this work that's going on that each and every one of you are doing to try to keep business here, to increase industry here. And thank you for that work because I know we're all we're, we're, you know, working tirelessly to do so, uh, to try to retain individuals. But again, these individuals have an improved lifestyle. They can better provide for their family even if they're not able to stay in our region. Um, you alluded to this a moment ago, UAM is the primary source of providing teachers, nurses, uh, and other healthcare professionals for this region. Uh, we, our school, our College of Forestry, Ag, and Natural Resources uh, graduate individuals who go out in our agriculture community and work right here regionally, and they say in this area, they support the forestry industry. So we could go on with each program, and I always feel like I'm leaving one out. I don't want to do that, but they're all so extraordinarily important, as you can see, to our livelihood here and, and our future for Southeast Arkansas, which I truly believe is going to be bright. And I think that we all need to continue working together as we have to make sure that the, the future for this region is bright and UAM stands ready to do our part. Uh, certainly, uh, it's a challenge in today's um, economy when we've seen our inflation increase at such a large rate. Um, our funding is not increasing at a rate to, to meet that uh, inflationary cost. And we are facing across the country right now, uh, not just in Arkansas, but across the country, a declining uh, college going rate or even anything post-secondary going rate. Uh, and that, that is of great concern. So we have some challenges. But with your help and this kind of information, uh, we stand uh, ready to, uh, to prosper, to continue to prosper, and to uh, overcome any obstacles that we have. Uh, we feel that UAM is in a good place right now and that uh, our recruitment efforts are paying off. So um, I'm very encouraged about the future. I'd, I'd like to stop for just a moment because we really do want to hear from you. And it might be that we need to raise the house lights just a, a, a little bit. And I believe we've got some microphones at each corner here. And uh, please don't be bashful. Uh, I want to hear your thoughts uh, for our questions. 
for Dr. Pelkey. If it's about this, I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Pelkey. I know, I know uh, where the experts, ex expertise lie in this. But we'd encourage you now to um, share comments or to ask any questions that you might have of either of us. Thank you, Senator Gilmore. Well, I'll start it off because I know people this way, okay. I'll start it off because I know people can be bashful and whenever a politician is given an opportunity for a microphone, they should never turn it down, right? So, uh, as we say in the legislature, everything has been said, not everyone said it yet. So, uh, I just want to say thank you to what you guys are doing. Dr. Pelkey, your leadership um, in this realm, also in the forestry space, the economic space of that, is vital to this region. You know, when we are at the legislature and we're telling our story here in South Carolina, tell the story, we're not talking about you And I guess I need to turn back. But I can. Is it me? I think it's signal. Okay, do I need to come down here or keep moving this way? Well, get over here in John's lap. Uh, but no, when we're at the Capitol and we're telling the story of Southeast Arkansas, what we have to offer, we can't tell that without UAM. And I know that when we call on you guys, you are so quick to respond. You are so quick to answer. You're getting us the details that we need. And one of the things when we were advocating uh, for the Forest Business Center uh, to, to get that increased funding, it was, it was pretty easy. Y'all made it pretty easy for us. I'm not saying it was just it happened, but y'all made it easy because you do a great job of letting people know what you do, and in Little Rock, people understand that. Now, there's a lot more we need to do, there's no question. But I just, I, I want to make the point, because I know everyone understands the value in, uh, in this room of UAM, but I see it statewide as someone who represents this area, who represents UAM, and it is vital. So I hope, and I know we will, but I hope we continue to uh, support UAM, uh, not only from every aspect, but you know, my district's very heavily involved in forestry, and UAM is vital to that. So, if we could, can we just give a round of applause to UAM, to Dr. Doss, to Dr. Pelkey, Jeff Weaver, everyone in the room that makes everything that they do possible? Would you join me in giving them a round of applause, please? For this And as we've talked before, this is something that needs to, we need to take this on the, on the road. It needs to be a road show. Uh, and I know Dr. Pelkey was really excited when I mentioned that because that means that's more work for him. But this is the story that we need to tell. So I just applaud you for what you're doing. I applaud everyone for being in the room who supports it because I see so many faces in here who give money, who give back to this university, who've gotten so much from it and, and feel the reason and the need to give back. And so. With that, thank you so much. Uh, the, the politician is going to quit talking now, unless uh, Howard may want to say a word or two. I don't know, or not. So uh, <laughs> I'm going to put you on the spot. But again, thank you all so much for what you do. Anyone else who really do want to hear from you? For the nice presentation, I, I really enjoyed it. Uh, from a faculty perspective, I see there is a lot of uh, chances that for university. Uh, looking at these numbers, uh, it's, like a, it's a concern or a question for both of you. Like uh, here, I can see the four year degree contributes at 27,000, uh, and a graduate is contributing by 39. You know? So, in the future, or do we have any plan to? grow these numbers so that the university can grow it. Or do you count me out again? So those those amounts? Yeah, those are, numbers are like a four year degree and graduate degree, they contribute to like a 27, 39. Right, so that would be over having a high school diploma only. Okay. So that was the baseline that we used mm -hmm. for all of these was over a high school diploma. Okay. Okay. That's 
I was thinking that if we are country like a education is providing that kind of money, then we might try to grow the university by offering more bachelor and graduate programs. That's what mm -hmm. I'm thinking. Yeah, additional degree programs yes. and, and, and you know, increasing enrollment, just as Dr. Doss said, is yeah. going to really Im impact or increase our impact statewide. Uh, and I was thinking also, you raise a good point, uh, I don't know how often we've taken statistics where we've had a student come in, take a class or two, not come back for a few years, but then come back maybe after some time and complete their degree, either associates. I, I couldn't help but thinking when I was looking at this data, sometimes when students come here and they realize, oh my gosh, this is a lot of work at the university. This is not, this is not what I, what I you know, this is a lot harder than I thought. And I, and I say that because I'm, I'm talking, I, uh, Dr. Saw teaches one of the most difficult classes. He's a, he's a statistics professor, biometrics. And so the students all go into his class knowing it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a long semester of some brain scratching and head scratching and, and a lot of work in a good way, in a good way though. And that's, that's important because when we get challenged, and I think sometimes the students that come in, they get challenged and they see, this is going to take a lot more for me to succeed in this world than maybe than I thought it would. And they may not choose UAM to continue their education, or they may not continue it at all, but it also gives them a picture of the world that we all compete in globally as well. Uh, and that can change behavior. You know, those that, and they may not choose to continue in the path of higher ed, but they may continue in the path of, I've got to, you know, you know uh, uh, my expectations of myself need to go up. And I think one of the things that UAM does is because we allow that, we you know, give everybody a chance. You know, we are open admissions, not open graduation, but come in and we'll give you a chance. And I've been here 23 years and I don't see any differentiation between students that how we teach students that have a 32 ACT and those that come in with a 17 or a 15. You know, we care about them. One of the reasons why I really like staying here uh, is because students are treated as human beings. Thank you. Other comments or questions? Yeah, I'll probably be fine. I won't stand here and twirl around. Uh, Appreciate you. are welcome. What, what I'll say is um, I want to echo what the senator said about this university and the impact that it has on South Arkansas, and not just South Arkansas, on the state. Uh, when we were advocating for the, the monies for the uh, Forest Research Center, you made it an easy sale. This university and, and Dr. Doss and Dr. Pelkey and, and the professors and leadership here are well respected in the state. And it made our jobs that much easier when we go to the governor, went to the legislature, pulled our colleagues in for that funding as, as the importance there. I, I think one of the key things uh, Dr. Pelkey did on that, the open admissions and what that means uh, in South Arkansas. Uh, Probably one of the one of the boards and, and most um, fulfilling organizations that are served on was the Single Parent Scholarship Foundation, and through that organization, I've had many uh, folks here in South Arkansas that were that first time, that first college course, and to come to a university where you know you're going to be walking the open arms and be accepted and embraced. And, and get the guidance and the leadership and the love that these students get is, is something great. At every meeting that, that I've been in with Dr. Doss and some of the leadership, they've spoken about individual students and their care and concern for these students. And I'm not saying they don't get that at every university, but I know they get it here. And I know that, that the leadership, Dr. Doss, they care about South Arkansas students. And that means a lot when these folks walk into something they're uncomfortable. They may not be the best students. They may have been uh, underperforming in high school. And they walk out of here trained and skilled. And they make a contribution to our workforce. 
So I, I, I'll echo what the senator said. Uh, applause is not enough. Uh, you will always have my support. And if there's anything that I can do for University of Arkansas at Monticello, I'm all in. And I see firsthand in economic development when we bring projects or prospects into this region, what the university can offer, what the two CTC schools can offer. Um, I mean, it's, it's essential. Without this university and without, without those, those two other campuses, this would be a different place to live. Many of us in this room would not be here. So everything that we can do, you have a, a captive audience, and I'll always be a champion for you, Amy. And thank you for watching. Thank you, Senator Hall. Anyone else? I want to say that as I look around this room, and, and I want to, I'm going to say especially thank you to Senator Gilmore and Representative Beatty and Representative Wardlaw and our delegation here for the work that they do for us. Uh, it is your voice counts. Uh, you're there um, with the leaders of our state who can make a difference in what happens in our communities. Thank you for being an advocate for us. Um, I must say that the real power in what we do at UAM lies with our faculty and staff. Uh, this room is filled with individuals as I look around that they're on the, the, the front for, uh, of what we do every single day, uh, working with our students, um, working with all of our students, and you pointed out, regardless of their backgrounds, regardless of what they may look like academically, and we have some very strong students, and we have some that need a little bit more nurturing. But for this faculty and staff who every day go into that classroom and dedicate themselves to excellence and helping those students to grow and be better and get an education uh, is, is the part of, of what we do, along with all of those people who provide counseling and support and other things to help students succeed through uh, tutoring or whatever it may be. So it is truly, it is truly a collective group of people who do this. And then I look at the community members here that I see on an ongoing basis at all of our events and that so graciously support our needs when we ask and we do ask from time to time and uh, they're very supportive of us and I appreciate that so very much. So, uh, you know, you hear the old thing that we talked about, it takes a village to, to raise a child, it takes a village to get students through college sometimes as well and it takes the state leadership so thank you so much for what you do. And, and it was especially important because I think right now you're seeing the fruits of some of the, uh, you're seeing the return on investment for uh, the monies that were given to UAM for the Arkansas Forestry Business Center. Uh, we could not have had the reports and the information that we had today had you not been champions for that and for all of you in this room that supported it. Uh, so. I, I wanted to, we wanted to share with you this information because we want you to see what you're doing for UAM to help us grow and be better and to sustain us is paying off in return is supporting this community and our state. Um, and I know that uh, you have some flyers to take with you, some brochures. And what I'm going to ask is that you can get more of these if you need them. We'll make sure that you have them. But I think you're sharing this story with the people that you see. You're putting this information out in your places of business. You're sharing this with your uh, community leaderships, with quorum courts, with city councils, uh, wherever you go. If you want us to come and do a Rotary Club, uh, I'm volunteering Dr. Pilgrim <laughs> for, <laughs> for presentations. But I think this really needs to be something that we make sure broadly in Southeast Arkansas across the state that we let, uh, let this be known. So I want to thank you all for being here. I do want to give just a moment more. If there's anyone that has a question or wants to make a comment, uh, I want to be sure that you have that opportunity. Okay, Dr. Clayton. Dr. Clayton is our Dean of the School of Business and she is very instrumental. She's gonna be working with Dr. Pelkey, she and her unit on a lot of economic development. And uh, so Dr. Clayton, you wanna stand and Share, share some things.
I think we can see some of the things Matt mentioned, uh, particularly kind of going down to the people level. If you look, to, it seems to me that Monticello has been having a growth spurt. I mean, we're getting an Arby's, yay. To me, that's good news. And yesterday I heard a rumor that somebody's going to put in a brick oven pizza. And all right, so we're getting more fast food. And all right, they will hire people, they will eat. They may go to one of the new oil change places that opened up across Walmart. They may take their car to the new car wash out there. And they may decide to stop at the business at the end of the main entrance. That has been spending, standing vacant for a while, but now it's a tanning business. I wonder what it was. I thought people had quit getting tans. They were dangerous. But if you look at these, would those be coming here if UAM was not here? I mean, that's the effects you can look around and see just kind of driving through, uh, kind of casual. Uh, let me see. Horseback statistics, what you can observe as you go through on horseback and look around and see. All right, that's appropriate for our Ag School too, and you are the College of Natural Resources, correct? Okay, that's all I have to say. So I'm gonna look forward to brick oven, Arby's, and then I may go to one of the slim fast places in town. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Clayton, for pointing that out. I think that we oftentimes forget, too, one of the things that, you know, those jobs may not seem real glamorous, but the people that are working there then think, hey, there's a college close by. I can take a class or two, get started on something more. So those are gateway kinds of jobs that, that provide people a chance and the integration between the community I think in the university, the opportunity to provide and assist. So these small businesses are really important. Uh, and in some cases, they keep some of our, our, our high school graduates around, and they may not even be thinking about college when they graduate. They want to they, they wanna start a life. Well, I sure did when I was 18, too. Uh, and so, you know, but then they've got a chance to also stay here, continue building that life, uh, and of course, Back when I was in school, the previous century, you know, not many students were married. Not many, you know, it was it was go to school for four years. That doesn't happen with our students anymore. They've got families. They've got responsibilities with their parents, with their grandparents, with children, with jobs, and, and they need to work. And uh, so this is another place that they can get that accommodation and understanding uh, that uh, they you know they need to get on with their life, but in the process. Let's give them a hand up with some more skills. So I, I relate that that you brought that out, and it's like yes, we are seeing a lot of growth, and that is and that is very good. You needn't worry. There's no test. I get this look in a lot of my economics classes. Okay. Anyone else before we close for the day? Well, I want to thank each and every one of you again for. First of all, for all of your support, I want to thank the faculty and staff, Dr. Pelkey, all of the deans, the administration for what you do to make our work here every day uh, happen. Uh, we can't do it, though, without our community support. I want to thank you each for being present and so willing to support UAM when we reach out to you. And we hope that we're doing the same thing for you uh, uh, when you reach out to us. So thank you for your presence today. And, uh, you know, again, give us a call if you have any questions. Uh, I just ask that you share this information and try to make this um, visible out in our community. We'll, we will come and do presentations if you would like, but we certainly want you to uh, share this information uh, as you go out into your workplace. Thank you so much for being here today.